No, <laughs> but I do think that um, the magazines have to evolve mm -hmm. uh, and I think that, that they serve a place uh, not so much in a news capacity, mm -hmm. um, certainly for us in the fashion industry, in more of a, um, a as a sort of escapism mm -hmm. and inspiration. Mm -hmm. um, we can have beautiful in-depth articles, long articles that perhaps yes. people wouldn't take the time to read online. Yeah. Um, beautiful photo shoots always look so good printed. Mm -hmm. um, they look amazing on screen, some of the shoots that we do, but printed is where they really come into their own. So there will always be a place for fashion magazines. Mm -hmm. Magazines now more than ever, mm -hmm. uh, particularly ones that are um, have beautiful paper and beautiful imagery. Uh, so they're almost like coffee table books to us now. And there is something very special about them and something very luxurious about them. So you want to keep them. For, for magazines to survive, we need to offer something that, mm -hmm. uh, that online doesn't. Mm -hmm. And in the case of Grazia Australia, mm -hmm. that is this beautiful magazine that, yes. that we were just looking at a moment ago, mm -hmm. uh, it's that it, um, it has these beautiful um, art directed images, whether it's um, you know, of a, a bag or whether it's a photo shoot mm -hmm. or um, of, of some artwork or a, a, a beautiful um, perfume arrangement. You are so surrounded by beautiful fashion and beautiful things and pictures of beautiful things and you know you want everything you end up getting nothing because there's too much to choose from so you so yes. that's probably the downside that yes. I call it an occupational hazard that you want everything <laughs> okay. at the end of it. Now to be a fashion journalist you need to be really experienced in digital, sometimes be able to style, you need yes. to be able to uh, work with influencers um, so that, you know you can do things in collaboration with them mm -hmm. you, as well as doing a magazine. So having an interest in digital um, and doing, being able to do both mm -hmm. makes you so much more employable, mm -hmm. it makes you so much more valuable. It makes you so much more rounded as a journalist. Mm -hmm. um, and for me, I love having the mixture of both because I work both on a daily yeah. online platform for Grazia Australia, mm -hmm. and as well as our long form mag magazine version. And I get that kind of quick hit, news punchy, news journalist mm -hmm. vibe from the online, but I can really think about longer features and mm -hmm. more in depth things for the magazine. So I'm lucky I have the best of both worlds, yeah. but it's important to have both of those skills. I don't know of any other industry that's changed maybe as much as yes. media has and that's because of the digital age and that's because of social media. Even the way that they, sh you know, the designers show their fashion now has changed. Mm. Yeah. Uh, there's this big debate over um, you know, the old way of doing things where you have fat, you design a collection, mm. you show it in a runway show, mm. people then come and buy the collection to put in their stores six months later. Um, but because of social media and people seeing the clothes then and there, when people are like live streaming from the front row, mm. people want to buy those clothes as soon as they see them. Um, so the d designers now have this dilemma, do it the old fashioned way, which is the traditional way, uh, or do I sell it? Do I create more clothes um, under the hope that people want to buy it then and there and, and sell it at the same time as my fashion show? And most designers now start with an online store. Mm -hmm. It's quite easy to you know, start your own online store, you can mm -hmm. set up the web page yourself um, and, and trade that way, whereas before you'd need to create an amazing product, then convince someone else to sell it for you. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it's a really exciting time to be a designer. She started off her career mm -hmm. as a Grazia It Girl. So she's had, since the very beginning of her blogging career, quite a tight relationship with, uh, with Grazia as the brand in Italy, where the Grazia magazine originated from. And so many years ago, when this new phenomenon of a blogger, which yeah. was a new thing, um, began, Grazia realised that it was a new cultural phenomenon. They got a group of the, I guess, the the key up-and-coming bloggers mm -hmm. and they supported them by running stories about them in the magazine, um, engaging with them and teaming up with them a lot and so she was and they called it their it girl. There was a real 
uh, the butting of heads between journalists and bloggers because mm. for people who've trained and worked mm. and spent years getting to go to the shows and reporting pro you know, seriously on the shows, to then be moved to the third row and to have bloggers who've never written before, who've been, who just look good, but now we respect their platform, they respect our expertise, we work together a lot. Um, we quite often write stories with bloggers together, um, using their opinions, using them as talent for shoots, they interview us for things, so it's finally we have this harmony. Big eyes. Yes. Is that because she has one eye yes. sleeping and one eye? Yes. <laughs> Yes, he is heavily tattooed.